our first presenter of Act Two is a nationally recognized author, speaker, and sustainability consultant. He is the senior director at Upswing Solutions and the author of a new book, How We Gather Matters. Please welcome to the stage, Lior Rothschild. Thank you. Salam, shalom, hello. Namaste. I'm Lior Rothschild. It's my privilege to be here for this tribute of Eau Claire in the middle of this place, Mokinsis, which is the uh, home of the Blackfoot Confederacy, the Stony Nakoda, the Sutina, and the Métis Nation in District 6. I love events. Events like Pachakacha, Folk Fest, SIF, Calgary Stampede. I think they are this underutilized and incredible platform for incredible change in our society and in our community. And I've had this really unique behind the scenes perspective on events for a long time and I've seen incredible environmental disasters headed straight for our landfill. It's what led me to create a social enterprise, a company called Do It Green or Dig because I was motivated to keep these environmental disasters out of our local landfill. And if you care about climate change, then you care about landfills because they represent 20% of Canada's greenhouse gas emissions. The 1988 Olympics are still there in our landfill. And so the, the uh, company that I started it was really about creating net zero and zero waste events all across uh, Calgary. And we were able to demonstrate that even in an event of thousands of people in hundreds of different kinds of events, we were able to produce almost no waste and in some cases absolutely no waste this is a picture of me holding one bag of garbage for an event of uh, several thousands. And we are able to show people that this is, this is possible. They enter a place and see what the future can look like. So in those few hours, those few days, they walk out saying, yeah, why isn't every event a zero waste event? Uh, why isn't everything going to uh, compost or recycling as the last resort? That's right, recycling is the new last resort resort. Even food waste in your event is not food waste. It's leftovers that can be donated. And there's a great organization in locally called Leftovers that helped us to make sure that food from major events all over town was going to the Mustard Seed, the Drop-In Center, women's shelters, and all kinds of wonderful social agencies that were able to make sure it got to the right places, people in need. I remember when the Calgary Folk Music Festival brought in our, uh, our mobile water stations and we got rid of bottled water at the event and I got a call from the person who was collecting recycling at the time and said, we've been robbed, there's no, there's no plastic here anymore. And it's kind of like, oh, did I tell you that we don't have bottled water at the festival anymore? He said, oh, well, great for the planet then. When COVID-19, uh, decimated the events industry. I shut down Dig. It was, uh, it was a closure that uh, was, was quite an emotional experience for me. But when events came back and the Calgary Stampede called me and wanted to, bring, wanted to resurrect those environmental programs, I said, I don't want to restart this company. I took it to the Center for Newcomers who, and trained them so that these environmental programs are now staffed by new immigrants and refugees from the Ukraine, Syria, and Afghanistan running that program. It's a beautiful story that really reminded me that after closure, after the end of something, something altogether new, different, and sometimes with an even bigger impact can take its place. Right? We're, we're here in Eau Claire, and uh, although it's it's in some ways a sad occasion to see this place go. Let's be hopeful for what might happen next in our community. Something maybe new, different, unexpected with an even greater impact. And let's, let's you know, like recognize that, you know, Eau Claire, <laughs> Eau Claire never really achieved its full potential. At times it felt like a 
you know, post-zombie apocalypse, you know, like ghost town here. Um, but, you know, for me, it wasn't just an empty mall with a food court and a, and a great cinema. It was also an event space. One of my favorite events was this uh, secret 3K event that happened every year on International Women's Day. Uh, very accessible for people to be able to run their first 3K. And who doesn't love, you know, warming up with a bunch of girl guide cookies on a stage? But it was never designed as an events venue. And I think that when you experience the kind of closure that Eau Claire is experiencing right now, it's, it can unlock incredible creativity to think of like how to design spaces with a lot of utility and function that bring us all together. If the space does have a new food court, I hope they consider bringing in ethnicity catering, somebody that I, I uh, think very highly of. It's also run by the Center for Newcomers. Um, ethnic cuisine, but for, for the people cooking it, it's really just recipes from back home. And it's delicious, and it's wonderful. I hope they also engage my friend Nabil, who runs, runs a really great organization called Pedesting. They can consult them on making sure it's a very accessible space and uh, will be featured on their app that uh, helps people with mobility challenges navigate their way through our city and beyond. Let's take this opportunity to reflect on the fact that something new can arise here, but we need to be involved in it. We need to bring our know-how, our ambition, our hopes, our advice, and kick it forward to a new generation who will take these aspirations and create something with an even bigger impact. I, I, I collected all these stories in a book that I am just about to launch, and I hope that it can be a valuable resource and entertaining uh, opportunity to reimagine events as this really important way to not only bring us together, but imagine a different future for us all. Thank you.